60 percent of 60 to 70 percent of the film is set in a house. So how do you tackle that? You know, how do you handle that? Uh, so those were the the things that we tried to address while we were uh, uh, working. Also, as a director, when I was looking at directing the film, I tried to see what all I could bring in as a director to see that it does the house doesn't get to you, the characters don't get to you. So those are the things that uh, uh, that we started working on and uh, uh, and ended up you know working the way it uh, uh, came about in the film. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go back to the beginning. Uh, you know, there is, and we were having this conversation right before we came here. I mean, there is such a thing as tyranny of opinion, right? I, or there used to be where somebody uh, would hold forth on a film or a book, and that becomes, at some level, the driving force behind people watching it or reading a book or going to a restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. I think what we're facing right now is a tsunami of opinion, especially when it comes to movies. Uh, and that happened with yours as well. Yeah. Uh, you were, your last two films, the, your first two films were very well received and yeah. of course you know you benefited greatly from that yeah. when when a film like ganchakar comes out and everyone out there especially in social media starts giving the opinion out from the friday morning onwards how much does that affect and I'm, and this of course can be a question posed to most filmmakers now how much does that affect you personally in terms of well this movie's over but you will be making another film soon how much does that kind of uh, shake your confidence levels when you see that many people sort of jumping on to a film that they either liked or did not? Uh, I think I'll be lying if I say it doesn't affect us uh, as filmmakers. But thankfully, I'm not on any social media. So, uh, But my uh, uh, assistants, are, all of them are. So of course, I got to know the opinion. Of course, people walk up to me and say, Yaar, main, matlab, I didn't like this, I didn't like that. Uh, so that's there. It affects you because you have spent, uh, you know, two years of your life writing that film, uh, casting for it, and then shooting that film, and then whole process of of seeing it through. So of course it affects you. You would want ideally to do your film, uh, your film to do well. So it affects you, but not to an extent where, you know, you start questioning your belief or mm. or self belief, uh, because that's the only thing that you have. I mean. The only thing that I have as a uh, as a filmmaker is my conviction. So the day I lose that, you know, irrespective of how my film does, uh, you know, uh, I could have, as you said, No One Kill Jessica and Amir were a very well received film by uh, critics and by uh, the audience. But for me, it was, I never thought that, you know, as a filmmaker, I thought I made a film. I didn't think that I made a brilliant film. I just thought this, there was this idea that I wanted to explore, I wanted to make a film about. And I made the film. Mm. So when Ganchakkar came in, I never thought that I had made two brilliant films. Mm. I thought this idea looked great to me and it could come into a space where it was, uh, it becomes a black comedy, although, I mean, there's no genre as black comedy, uh, but, uh, 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 or a term as black comedy in terms of definition. Uh, but I thought it could be in a space which would be very interesting. So that's how uh, I ended up making the film. Uh, and you feel bad. I mean, you feel that, yeah, I hope that uh, uh, more people had liked the film. But to be uh, uh, be honest, when I was making this film, I was well aware that it's a film that will not be universally accepted as Jessica and as Amir. Uh, but I was hoping that more people like it than not liking it. But uh, opposite happened. But thankfully for us, because the budget was very controlled, uh, because we knew that we were taking a risk making this film. Uh, so we ended up being on a, I mean, the producer ended making some money uh, mm. out of it. So that was uh, was something which helped us. Right. So I, um, what I'm really fascinated by is that the, the three films that you've directed, Amir was a really gripping action drama. I mean, by the way, Raja Sen is the one I remember in an email he sent to me four, five, six years ago, I forget. He said, you have to see this film, Amir. And it never opened in New York, and finally I managed to get a DVD. It was this guy's recommendation, really. Um, the Jessica Lal story was a very topical story that everybody knew about it, and then when you approached it, sort of in your own way, adding some characters. Um, and I also discovered just this morning, actually, that Barana, one of my favorite films, you wrote, you wrote the script for it. Um, when you go to do, do a black comedy like that, uh, a very different genre, really. 
tell us about the process of doing a very different film, writing the script itself, where you had to maintain that tone of humor throughout, uh, which is very different than what you had done before. So talk to us about the process about that. I think uh, uh, when the, this film I had co-written with uh, Parvez Sheikh, who, uh, whose original story was what impressed me most. So when I got the story, I thought it could turn out to be something which is very different, something that also if you look at the film, it's, it's, it doesn't fall under any genre in that sense. It's also at one point, it's a black comedy, at one point, it's a comedy, and by the end of it, it becomes kind of a thriller and a tragedy uh, uh, in that sense. So the approach was to take it naturally. The approach was to see where these characters go. The approach was to, uh, to begin, a, begin on a lighter note, uh, very lifelike, and see how these situations, uh, you know, uh, 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 presents itself to, you know, and see how these characters uh, react to that. Uh, of course, I was very aware that we are making a film where I wanted to have a, a, a very quirky comic element attached to it. So the characters also behaved like that. So if you look at these goons, they are fools. I mean, they're lovable fools. You don't, uh, uh, you, they're harmless. You never feel threatened by them. You know, so those were the kind of, uh, uh, of things that I kept in mind, or it was there in my mind in terms of exploring the subject. Also, I, what I didn't want to do with this was go in a space which, which we had seen, like, uh, like if you look at uh, one of the elements in the film is that man, they keep on bumping to this man who is, you know, coming back from work and going back, that, that Sabzi Wala guy. So initially when, uh, when Parvez gave it to me, it was just, uh, 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 he comes once. But I thought it would be a great motive to have him come back whenever they are there and to also make him reappear in the climax. You know, so those were the kind of small, small things that that uh, uh, that ended up, you know, making this, uh, uh, making the character, making the film. Also, I've got uh, uh, a lot of people have a lot of om opinion on Vidya's character, and also the way she dresses. But that purely came from uh, what I've seen. You know, when I was, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, m doing promotion for the film in Delhi and in Chandigarh, a lot of uh, 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 female journalists told me that, you know, you, I, we have seen so many people doing this. You know, we have seen so many people wearing clothes like that, Mary Auntie, I see And all the clothes, all the clothes that we got were actually picked up from the market. So, of course, it's, it's something out there, you know, you know, which sure, people, yeah. yeah. So, I think those were small, small things that uh, 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 that came in, and I also wanted to represent Imran or the character of uh, of Sanju in a very different way. Who who is somebody? I mean, very subdued. Mm. He's not your, I mean, not your hero hero kind of a thing. And casting uh, somebody like Imran, who has always been like a hero for a from an audience point of view. Uh, uh, so I think these 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 were the small things that added, it just came together. So, so and uh, the biggest debate that was in my mind and of course people watching the film was about the ending. So that's something which I was very clear about. That's from the first day I was clear about. And even if I have to go back now and make the film, I won't, I might end up changing a couple of things, but I might not, I will never change the ending. Because that's what, that is very true to the genre. Also, if you look at the uh, uh, one point of criticism was, which I read or heard was the film had its own pace and the pace, uh, they didn't like the pace of the film. Okay. But my point is, is that when the film opens, there is a pace to the film and that pace is very consistent. It's not that it changes pace in the middle of, uh, uh, of the film. So I wanted it to be a film which, is, which has its own pace. And uh, that's how it was written as well. One thing which I wanted to do, which, uh, which people didn't get, I thought people will get it. If you look at it, look at the film, you'll always see that, you know, even in the beginning of the film, you'll see I pull out from the back of his head. Yeah. So the film is always about what is going on his head. It's about his he head. And if you see, there are four or five uh, 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 scenes in the film where you see that I remain on the, b the back of his head. Yeah. So, but, I think 
I was not able to to you know translate that because people didn't get that. So there are a lot of lot of points like that, but these were the small small things that uh, uh, layers that I tried to bring in and uh, uh, make the film, and it all came together. Let me let me ask you um, uh, just another c question about the comedy you you refer to it as a quirky comedy. When you're writing comedy. Uh, and comedy, I think, can be very relative. I mean, some people, uh, there's sort of a mass scale sort of comedy, that, you know, uh, mainstream comedy that people who like, and then there are other very special comedies. Um, how do you t keep faith in your belief that what you're writing, you're, you're really finding it funny, and that, the, that it'll translate well, and the audience will laugh also? You know, the interesting bit is that the, the funniest moment for me in the film is when, uh, you know, uh, when this guy, in the bank is eating kulfi and he's just scrapping it scrapping it scrapping it and this guy comes in and he says ki baskar sale kulfi wala kal fir aayega and you know <laughs> at the moment you read it i was laughing you know so for me those uh, if that makes me laugh and also uh, uh, the other situation like uh, namak kam hai yeah uh, when she's asking namak kam hai this this so i used to matlab mujhe bhi hansi aati thi so for me, those are the things which uh, which really gave me faith, and uh, 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 somewhere down the line, I was very convinced. Those, I think, those are also things that comes naturally. You know that uh, that's not the 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 harder bit. I think what is surprising it what people laugh at that you also not have expected. That's what surprises me most of the time. I never think like, for example, it's not in my film. But whenever I go to theater and I see people laughing when somebody slaps somebody, you know, in a in a comic way, and that has been happening for like generation, for like centuries, but people still laugh at that. Uh, but in terms of quirky comedy, I think these are small small moments which you feel uh, uh, that people will laugh, that you laugh at. Uh, you feel very light-hearted about it while while you are writing it. And you hope that people will also uh, identify with it, like the mask scene that was there. Yeah, so they they really, really, and while I was, you know, what happened while I was shooting it, uh, I told Nam, and while I was watching it on the monitor, I realized that when they do, when they move their head, you know, when they don't move their head swiftly, hmm. when they do like just this, very just slowly, no ja okay. jerky moment, movements didn't get give me any laughter. But while I was watching it on the monitor, what made me laugh was him just doing, him just doing this and this. Yes. So you see Amitabh Bachchan, Dharmendra, and Utpal that doing this. So yes. that that whole thought of of you know that image itself, uh, you know, made me feel very light-hearted about it. So those are the kind of it's it you go by instinct. So when you see a guy like an image of Utpal that. Dharmend and an Amitabh Bachchan standing and just saying Baskar Saleh Kulfi Wala Kalfi Raiga and there's this shot of their th all three and their faces. You know, and you, you it, it makes you laugh. Or the, the cop in the police station saying, Haan saab, yehi tino the. You know, you see the mask and you suddenly realize ah, he's speaking the truth <laughs> because he only saw these three people or these three masks. So those are, I think it's, it's just instinct, I would, I would say. Uh, you know about this quirky comedy. I think that I think that's the part of the film. In uh, for, uh, like in my review also of this film, I felt that the first two thirds were really good. I felt the final act, uh, you know, lacked a plot reveal. I felt, and uh, I think that's what happens in the film. Is my opinion is that I think the quirky bits work really well. You constantly laugh. The sabzi wala guy, the you know the uh, medicine seller, all of those yeah. things are really funny. But I think does that. The balance has to be maintained between, you know, the, the quirky comedy and the plot. Do you think it, it over? There is a danger of that, uh, the quirks overtaking the plot, or is that not necessarily a bad thing? No, I don't think it's a. a Ghanchakkar is a film about plot. I don't think Ghanchakkar is a film about plot. You know, it is more about characters. It's more about situation. It's just about one incident that happened. It's not much more about, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, plot. Uh, but yeah, in terms of genre, it shifts, shifts genre, uh, say, you know, uh, for the last 20, 30 minutes. But I, it's my personal take. Sure. My personal take in terms of, you know, life is not that simple. You know, it's it not, genre. you know, it, it, you, you, I was talking to somebody in the morning and I say, you know, you think that you will do something like this, but 
one year down the line, you feel it's completely changed. You know, you thought you will do something like that, and completely opposite happens. So for me, it was very lifelike. And these are characters who are not, who are very grey. They are not good people. Mm. I mean, they are lovable characters. They are lovable fools. But still, they are not good people. They are con men. Right. You know. So and and uh, uh, say a 35. Uh, they are involved in in a 35 crore heist. So how? Where will this end? For me, it won't end where they end up, you know, sharing the money or the booty, for that matter. For me, it will end some, I mean, this way, you know, where you don't know who got the money. At least for me, it's that. Mm. I don't know who got the money. You know, um, for me, they didn't get the money. Sure. You know, so, of course, we shifted. I, uh, the film shifts its genre. Mm. Uh, if you look at it, largely, it didn't go well down with people uh, but for me as a filmmaker i think that's what was more interesting because it's very lifelike you know in life it's not things happen like that that you think it will end up like that uh, and it ends up like that probably this was something audience was expecting that there would be he will uh, get up and say and mama i'm coming home mm. uh, but for me that was not that was not what i wanted to do and that's not uh, 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 what helped uh, me. Rajkumar, when you, when you cast someone like Imran Hashmi, the audience is already expecting something. Yeah. I mean, he has a huge captive following across India, which a lot of people don't realize is, is based on, uh, you know, I mean, of course, we should get into what you think of Imran Hashmi uh, yourself. Uh, was, it, was it a tough choice to make? Because he comes with a certain baggage, a certain genre of films uh, that have done phenomenally well over, over a period of time for him personally, uh, when you cast him in some, it's almost anti-casting if you make Imran Hashmi play anything but Imran Hashmi. Was, was that a tough call for you? No, I think that's a high. I think that's, that's quite fascinating when you, you know, uh, you get an actor who has done, uh, whose body of work is of a certain kind, you know, uh, uh, and you get him do something like that is, is very interesting. It's, it's, it, it gives us much, it gives us a high. Uh, but what is interesting is how passionate is the actor, mm. you know, uh, to do this film or to do Ghanchakkar. That's what is, is most important. Uh, but it is quite fascinating. It's challenging, it's fascinating. And somewhere down the line, uh, what you do is it makes you, you are molding an actor in a way that he, uh, uh, a work that he has not done previously. You know, but the interesting bit is whether the actor is, you know, because it's a collaborative effort, whether the actor wants to do it and whether he's in the same wavelength as you are. So that's, that's something which is more important for me. Had you, had you, had you cast him uh, before you saw Shanghai or after you saw Shanghai? No, before. Before, uh, I don't remember correctly, but I think yeah, yeah, before I casted, uh, uh, before Shanghai came out, before Dirty Pictures actually. No, actually what I was talking about was the audience reception to him. For some reason, uh, his core following doesn't want him to be anything but Imran Hashmi in all his films. Yeah. And, you know, he, there are three or four things that they expect in his film. Yeah. A yeah. Sufi has to kiss uh, and etc, etc. Yeah. You, you, uh, you get the drift. Uh, from you and... and as a writer director and from the perspective of producers did you feel like will this go down well with that audience going to come in and perhaps hate you for doing that to him uh, because that's that's what has happened to a lot of his films in the past including shanghai of course yeah, yeah. no i don't i have never thought about that you know uh, all my three films i never thought about that i you know i used to hear when i was doing no one kill jessica with rani and with their Nobody was ready to take us seriously because they thought that, you know, do ladkiyon wali film, kya chalegi? Till the time the first uh, uh, trailers came out or first look came out. So I was never bothered about, uh, uh, about that. Of course, you want the audience, of course, there is uh, 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 quite a responsibility because you, you're working with somebody who has a fan following. Uh, but you go with your honesty, you go with your conviction, and you hope that people will also see your point of view or the way you are looking at the film or the story uh, and hope his core audience helps your film. So that's how you, uh, you go about. 
I mean, he's also been, as an actor, he's been trying to prove himself as, yeah. as yeah. a, you know, as as good as any other actor can be, uh, despite being the star that he is, of a, you know, of a certain genre of films. Was that was that one of the things that drove him to do this film? Yeah, he's a he's a very intelligent actor. He's a very very intelligent actor and a brilliant actor, in the sense that you know we hardly. Before, I mean, uh, uh, before the film, before we went on floors, we spoke about the character uh, briefly. Probably he got the character from the script. We spoke about it very briefly. And uh, while we were shooting, I don't think we ended up discussing how this sh scene should be played out, how, what I wanted of him. No, I think probably the script, we were on the same wavelength in terms of character, in terms of... of uh, how the scene should work or it shouldn't work. So that's what helped. And he's a very intelligent guy. Yeah. So that's why you don't want to, uh, you don't need to, you know, uh, explain him everything. The motivation or things like that. I don't, I don't think that happens now, where you're explaining motivation to uh, an actor. Uh, coming to you, uh, Rajkumar, uh, you made three films so far. Uh, all three have been uh, you know, represent in some form or the other metropolitan India, um, Amir, No One Kills Jessica, and also Ganchakar in his own way in terms of the setting at least. You're from Hazari Bagh, uh, we just heard you went to DPS Bukharo. Yeah. I'm amazed that so far in your work, because I'm only asking this question because you're a writer, director, not yeah, just yeah. a director. Uh, that that Hindi heartland has not come through to, come through in your in your work so far. Is that a conscious choice you made? No, not really. I haven't got any story. Also, what has happened that I have, uh, uh, I mean, I have stayed in Delhi, I have stayed uh, uh, in Bombay. Uh, and I have a very outsider kind of a perspective about these cities. Mm. I mean, be it Delhi, be it Bombay. I also want to get a, an outsider perspective of my own city, mm. you know, of uh, uh, the Hindi heartland where I grew. Mm. So I want to have that perspective first and a story. Most importantly, a story to uh, uh, to tell. But I want that outsider perspective. I'm very fascinated by an outsider perspective.